welcome everybody to C Fanal Channel or CCTV, Celestial Watchers. Welcome all you sky watchers, you sky hunters looking for stuff. Well, I got some crazy stuff for you right here. I did a real fast uh, time lapse on this just to give you a quick preview of what we're getting ready to forensic. We're going to do a little forensicking, and I'm going to give you the best shot of an asteroid I've ever seen. Uh, a couple news clips are going to explain what they were predicting on January 16th. Um, I tried to upload this thing three times right after I came back from my three weeks off, and uh, they would not have it. So I waited one month, and I constructed this new video of it. That's actually better. <clears throat> but this is really in the skies. Let's listen in to Paul Begley and uh, Mike from around the world, all right? Check this out. I'm going to do the forensic. You guys watch. Welcome, all you new people. If you haven't seen me do a forensic show, you've seen my filters. Now, forensic... Um, I've already mag magnified this up to a thousand times, maximize it, not zoom, maximize it. I do the dehazing on it, <clears throat> and it's a very clear picture, no fog, no chemtrails. I can remove a lot of that. And so on this forensic tool I have, you could do this sweep, they call it, and I could bring the light way down, and they have it a illuminate, uh, pixel, uh, pixelating type thing where you can see the surface of something um, and so I'm going to zoom in here and you're going to see the surface of what looks like a mountain in the sky one side looks like an alien ship which we've seen the metal reflective planet around the sun and the other side when it flips you'll see it looks like this like a mountain ridge so listen in on Paul and uh, Mike from around the world all right good, good, and good, good, good. Great stay for the whole show it's going to get better got a great crowd of folks here listening and Mike, I don't know if you heard, I read part of this article from Forbes magazine talking about this. They even quote your exact date, August 17, 2017, the arrival of this first wave of energy. They're saying it came from a collision of two neutron stars that created what they call a kilotron. Um, that's fine. You know, they're admitting that something happened that caused these two to spin very quickly and crash into each other, relating, releasing a tremendous amount of energy that's affecting the Earth's magnetic field and that more waves are coming. So this kind of, I mean, what's amazing about this, Mike, is this, this, this article was released by Ford Magazine four hours before our show tonight. I, I have no doubt in my mind that they are listening to these programs and they know that what we're talking about is at a high level of interest for the general public. What is your? Have you had a chance to see this and what's your take on this? Well, no, I haven't seen it, um, but interesting, isn't it? Interesting. Very interesting. They, um, as time continues to go, go forward, I did hear, however, the last article you read about the, uh, the UK, but concerning Forbes, um, it's interesting they will put that on Forbes, number one. That's not really where you would get your scientific information from. Right. It would reach uh, influential individuals, right? Or right. Those who certainly have a potential to be that. But, uh, it, you know, let's just simply put that uh, more, more things are becoming very difficult to hide. And, and, and believe me, it's a, it's a uh, if they can come up with some sort of excuse to calm the masses, because the, one of the data, the data is coming back and it's becoming... Um, you know, irrefutable that something out there is happening, something is taking effect. Um, but as the days go forward, you're looking at a, a physical condition of people changing, and, and people are going to want they're, they're going to want answers to what's taking place. This stuff, these things that are happening on the face of the earth, they won't subside. They're going to continue uh, to increase in intensity. They're going to continue to, uh, the scope of them will increase also, and they're going to be hard pressed to come up with an explanation. And again, as I said before, not to lose, they don't want to lose face with the public. Uh, they want to say that they said something or they knew about something so that everybody does not run to an alternative media source, right? Right. Um, and that's just their, their, their mindset. This. They will always explain away as best they can uh, some incident that some 
stranger thought up and, and, and put out there, they're going to come out with something to make them to justify themselves so that they can remain in a position of importance. But the problem is when these things are, are happening back to back and they continue to happen, and then it has a physical effect on things on the earth and you have um, you know differences in, in um, uh, geology and topography of the earth, that's coming next. That's going to be a real problem. But Having said all of that, Pastor, it's becoming very difficult for them to hide that something is taking place. Yeah, and, and you know, Mike, whenever the fact is, when I'm reading the Forbes article, it uh, it admits that this wave of energy hit on August 17th, 2017. They call it a cosmic signal arrival at the Earth that would forever change how we view the universe. Um, and then they say it was caused by this collision of these two... Uh, uh, neutron stars that would that touched each other as they were spinning at almost the speed of light, creating a massive waves that have now entered, hit the Earth, and will continue to. Now, obviously, that's not the same thing you've been saying, and that what we've been talking about how that these waves are actually coming from a binary system, from let's say Planet X, Nibiru, or whatever anybody wants to call it, and uh, so what, you, what you're saying is exactly what you said they would say, and that is they would come up with excuses, they would make up different ways how things, to try to explain away the events that are happening on the earth. They say the magnetic field has drastically been hit, that the radiation levels are going to increase substantially in this article. And then today, earlier, Mike, earlier in the day, and Heidi reported this in our live show earlier today, that spaceweather.com came out just today with this one with this paragraph and chart called the atmospheric cosmic rays are increasing this was just today okay it said cosmic rays in the stratosphere are intensifying for the fourth year in a row this finding comes from a campaign of almost weekly high altitude balloon launches conducted by students by of earth to sky calculus since march of 2015 there's been a 13 percent increase in cosmic rays x-rays or gamma rays over central california okay and that the radiation level has raised by 13 percent over this four-year period and of course they had already earlier six months ago did a chart and said that radiation had gone up 18% over the last three years. So it's a 18% over the last three years, 13% over the last four years. All of this there is coming out the same day as the Forbes article, the same day that you and I were going to meet tonight to discuss the five waves of energy. Yeah, very interesting. Very interesting. Almost as though they're trying to uh, dovetail to take attention, or, or uh, I know they have to explain where you're addressing it some kind of way because it's not uh, it's not made up data. It's uh, you know a long time ago, about what, four or five years ago, it's very very difficult for people to justify any of these things because there was no uh, no uh, no one corroborated that story yet. Right? No, you were. You know, you were, the, you were the only one. I mean, you came on my show and you said, hey, look, here's what's going to start happening. And, yeah. uh, you know, you're talking about these waves of energy were coming. You, you, you start talking about there's going to be increase in earthquakes, increase in volcanism. There's going to be lightning storms, hail. Remember last uh, two weeks ago, you were on, you said hail. Mike, I got to tell you something. It, we had four hail storms here in San Diego this today. I'm sitting here in my son's home. The sun didn't come out. I wanted to go out all day long. I wanted to go out and sit and get in some sun. I'm taking a break. And four times it hailed. But now there's not a thunderstorm. There's no thunderstorm. No thunderstorm. Just hail started falling four times in one day. My 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 daughter-in-law thought I was nuts. She came home from work. I said, look, it's there's been three hail storms today. So we, or not a storm, just three times it has hailed. And she's kind of looks at me like, oh, he's kind of losing it with the apocalypse. But then it did it again th this evening and she saw it. She's got her camera out. And I said, what's going on? I don't know what's going on. But I remember you said hail. We're going to get more and more hail. So Mike, what is going on? Is this what else do, can we expect in the next few weeks? Pastor, these, uh, these, these, the influx of uh, CGRs, galactic cosmic rays coming into our solar system and our uh, 
ever-changing earth. These are the beginning of the conditions. There's something intermittent with these um, particles, these pulses coming through that I have not discussed yet for reason. Um, that that's going to be of a major concern. That the, this increase in radiation is going to be within itself a big problem. But I want to address something though. Um, we have discussed all this stuff coming in. These other folks are now jumping on board trying to, because they're trying to position themselves to be the experts in what they know without a doubt is about to take place. They're, they're positioning themselves, which will eventually go into the mainstream media. Uh, when you hear of CGRs in the mainstream media, and, and they actually cover this because they're told to, well, they have something to worry about because all this stuff that's coming is going to have an effect on all biological life on this planet, right? Now, there's going to be continental changes, yes, and other changes, but biological life is going to begin to suffer greatly. You're talking about radi radiation uh, plagues, radiation-driven plagues. You're speaking about, uh, um, we're, we're talking about um, particles that come in with these, uh, with this dust and everything else coming into the solar system. You're looking at arsenic symptoms all around the world, a weakness of mankind. In other words, these, these, the conflagration of these things, this, this uh, combination of these things is really going to cause a physical weakness, both mentally and physically in many. Radiation and magnetism will change the way we think. But fatigue is about to be a big problem, and people are going to be, uh, they're just not going to be happy uh, with these things. With the onset of these things, however, there, there are some other bigger things to come, which without uh, an explanation of these uh, galactic cosmic rays coming in, these pulses coming in, it would be hard for people to understand why in the world or what are they actually seeing? Because we have entered the times when people are going to see things, right? We're, we're, and everybody's going to try to explain them. What I have... Um, what I have done was set uh, just a, a small basis of a truth because I'm telling you they're going to mislead many. They're going to deny to the very end, even when people see a golden sky all the time, they're going to say it's something else, which is uh, people are going to be kept ignorant until the very last second. Hey, Mike. They're yes. already. They're already. I mean, I had a phone call from one of the, one of our uh, Paul Baby School of Prophecy school students who lives in Tasmania uh, and uh, down there, just south of Australia, and she said that the sky is golden now every day. That literally, the sunrises and the sunsets are totally different than they've ever been. Uh, and they're seeing that down there now. I don't know if we're seeing that. Maybe the uh, you know everywhere else on the globe tasmania is way down there i mean after tasmania it's it's uh, you know it's antarctica but they're seeing a golden sky every sun every sunrise and every sunset in tasmania yeah and that's a that's a reflection of the atmosphere certain light particles photon particles that are coming in changing or altering the way the sky looks the, the problem is that the the uh, the static and plasma is the next step which will reach the surface of the planet. And so as these things build, Pastor Paul, they're going to be, I hate to say this, but these things are going to cause real calamities on the earth. And it's ongoing. It's not like it's going to come and just stop. That's what I'm saying. This is a buildup into something um, that, that none of us really want to see. Nevertheless, it's going to take place. It's a true buildup of things. One of the one of the major things a lot of people lately have been asking, well, where should I go? And I've been telling them about the, the floods. And people ought to prepare themselves for both floods and a great dryness at the exact same time. A long time ago, I said this, and it didn't make sense to a lot of folks that we would have droughts and floods at the same time. But the way the weather patterns have changed, right? The, some of the more some of the more temperate porous regions of the earth are, are changing already. For example, if you were to think of Arizona and Mexico, New Mexico as places of dryness, that's going to change. It's going to become a saturation saturated place. We're going to have scald storms of which the jet stream will have no power to actually move because the atmosphere is going through an abrupt change. 
We're also going to have the more compact cumulonimbus clouds, which hold twice as much moisture as they ever had before. So a thunderstorm, an, an average thunderstorm, is going to cause massive fear within people because of floods. And what I mean by that is imagine a thunderstorm that's, that stretches from Texas to Quebec and Ontario, Canada, you know, going around in a uh, type of person there. One thunderstorm that will span the entire United States vertically is what we're looking at. What? Yeah, building up to this point, that, that's a lot of water. You know, you know, on a continuous basis, that's a lot of water. Yeah, right now, Mike, we've got a lot of flooding in Alabama, and we've got uh, some serious rains in Tennessee and Kentucky. We've got actually, we've got landslides, we've got roads washing out. That's been happening here just today. Uh, like I said, I'm sitting in what's supposed to be sunny Southern California, and uh, we had frost, 38 degrees and frost yesterday morning, and today I sat and watched it hailed four times. Four times it hailed, and it's not a thunderstorm, just hail falling from the sky. People are shaking their head around here wondering what in the world's going on. Uh, I realize this is February, and this is still kind of the winter, but you know, what's going on? So when you say there's gonna be these great floods yet great dryness, because the, the jet stream is gonna be pushed down. I mean, isn't that part of what this heavy dust, this heavy radiation, this CGRs, these uh, cosmic galactic rays, they're, they're, they're pushing this, the, the jet stream down and thus uh, when it rains, it pours, but other places won't get any rain. There's actually scripture on that in the book of Amos. That that's going to happen. It's going to rain in one city and not two other cities. And people are going to have to travel to try to find water. I mean, is this because of, I mean, I, we have to always look at the Bible prophecy tells us what's coming. And then scientifically, the events are unfolding. And that's what you're saying. Is that, is that, am I correct by saying this jet stream pushing down is really going to affect extreme weather? Yeah, in the atmosphere, as these particles enter in, right? Um, imagine if we went over the temperatures right in the atmospheres, in the, in the various atmospheres up there. You're looking at uh, some of the upper, upper atmospheres. There's hardly any matter in that portion of the atmosphere, right? But it gets to about, uh, it's about it can get up to 14,000 degrees, right? But you can't feel that heat because there are no molecules to carry that heat. But that is the heat potential up there, right? Okay. So what happens when you introduce matter? constantly introduce matter into the upper atmosphere. Well, the first thing you have is it becomes dense. As it becomes dense, that heat is transferred from molecule to molecule. As it becomes charged, that heat is transferred into the upper uh, occupational atmospheres that we have spacecraft in, even down to the stratosphere, right? So you're looking at a heating of the atmosphere from the top down, and I mean a severe heating. This particle flow is not gonna stop. The dust, the debris, uh, the objects are not gonna stop coming in. They're gonna build up and build up, and you're gonna have more molecules for this heat to travel. Therefore, in space, at a certain part of space, it's gonna be so hot that the spacecraft won't be able to be up there anymore. They're going to have to. They're going to have to really do something different up there. As this increases, it's going to cause compression on the lower atmospheres. Because you're looking at an expansion of gas, both gases. You're looking at an expansion of different uh, uh, various liquids and everything else in the upper upper atmosphere. And that will press down on the stratosphere. So then your cloud formations will be compressed. Right. So you're looking at that compression, which will change the, the uh, air pressure period around the Earth. And that air pressure change is going to change um, how water actually evaporates. Now, it's happening slowly right now. And all of these large cloud formations that can seem to hold hundreds of millions of tons of water that are dropping all over the place, that's also going to increase so much so that there's going to come a point in time where some nations won't have a dry spot in them and people will fear water. Now, the whole earth will not be destroyed by water, No, right? Life no. won't be destroyed, but there are going to be places on this earth it's going to seem like everything is saturated with water. Still, because of the, the wide temperature swings, there are going to be other places that will literally be on fire. 
right? You're looking at lower water levels, not because of an ambient temperature change, but because the air pressure is different, which will alter the boiling point. So then the, the uh, ocean levels and everything else are going to evaporate, causing greater and greater cloud formations, which means your lakes, your streams, your rivers, they're going to all but boil away. They're going to go away. They're going to steam away because of that pressure change. And then you have no drinkable water, but lots of salt water all over the place, or unless it rains. And, of course, that's going to be contaminated water because as these particles come in, so the radiation count is going to so, be transferred into the particles in the atmosphere already. So, so you're looking at slowly but surely irradiated water uh, just coming from yeah, the clouds. That's where it like rains. With arsenic, with arsenic. That's uh, wormwood. Embedded in them. That's wormwood, Mike. And so, and so we're going to have, that's going to cause larger hailstorms and flooding in some areas, massive flooding in some areas, tremendous droughts in others, and poisonous water, lower water levels. And what water you do have, a lot of the times it's going to be full of arsenic full of radiation poisoning. It is the wormwood effect. This is all biblically prophesied in the book of Revelation, the book of the Apocalypse. And we can study the Word of God, and we, and we find out that the from the Daniel to Revelation, we find out that God's Word told us way in advance of what was coming in the end days. And here we are today experiencing it, not only with these waves of energy, but these waves of energy are just they're, the, they're bringing about the effects that's coming up on the earth. And again, Mike, let's talk about this again. People want to know, you know, one of the things you said, I think a few months ago, was if we can just get through this winter. And you're like, yeah. you, you kept saying, man, if we just get through the winter, then we can worry about what's coming in the summer. So, uh, all right, we're about through the winter, but it's been pretty, uh, it's been pretty, uh, intense as far as weather conditions we've seen our blizzards as we talked about uh, we've, we've seen all kinds of weird stuff volcanoes are again erupting again yesterday mount etna again so what what's going to happen now what do you see now what can you tell us about we're still in the third wave of energy i take it and is there a fourth wave coming yet this year well let's talk about this let's talk about what we're dealing with right now okay with the influx of this radiation with these particles with okay. these highly charged particles our magnetosphere is, is, is taking all that energy, most of it, right, and diverting it inside of the planet. Yes, yes, so yes. So, so just imagine all that energy going inside the planet. That's heating the core. That's heating the core. It's, it's continually doing this. It hasn't stopped. It's, it's continually doing this. So, and the sun also, likewise, is also taking in a lot of that energy. Right, because it's already penetrated the heliosphere, so it's in the solar system, and all the planets are starting to take this in. So, what's it doing? It's heating up the planet from the inside out. Mm. Well, as this continues to happen, it's like a pressure cooker. If you didn't have a relief valve or a pressure cooker, it's going to blow. Right? Yeah. It's better to take the little top off a pressure cooker and let the steam out, and, and so it can make a violent, loud noise, than to not have any ventilation at all. And let the whole pot blow up and fragment that metal all over the place, killing everybody in the kitchen. In this case, we don't have the relief valves. We just, we simply don't have it. Well, the, so, well the volcanoes or are they going to be? Enough. They're not enough. Oh, wow. Based upon the volume of radiation, right, and, and charged particles being taken into the earth, they are not enough. That's why the earth is also doing something else. It's continually starting to pump out greater amounts of gamma rays from within the core of the earth. So the earth also right now is emitting gamma rays, and that's increasing. So you're looking at uh, magma on the move in a big way, in a big way, and eventually it's going to find its own relief hole somewhere. If not an old one, it's going to find a new one. It could find, you know, it could find 500 at one time. And so, but it is, it, it is of a nature that it doesn't, this doesn't happen slowly. This is a build up until the balloon pops. It's just like blowing up a balloon, right? It's, it's nice, it's calm, you blow it up, it gets tighter. You never know when it's gonna pop. You can only suspect the time when it's about to pop. And in our case, it's about to pop. It's gonna have to relieve itself, right? Based on the earthquakes we've had in the past and the radiation being monitored that's coming into the, uh, to our, to the earth. We've had, in proportion to that, we've had a certain amount of, of uh, volcanoes go. We've had certain volcanoes just start releasing things. This time, 
it's not enough that the, the, uh, the, the sheer volume of radiation coming in is not exiting uh, through volcanism. So we, there's a problem. And that's why I said if we make it through this winter, because we can really see a major, I do mean a major uh, volcanic eruption somewhere in the wrong places in, in, during this winter time, because it's, it's just that uh, it, it's incredible. There's, there are no early points. Is taking in more and more radiation, and that you know, all that heat, excess uh, energy has to go somewhere. It has to be transferred somewhere. It cannot stay in the cores. So it's going to come to the surface somehow. And this is what this is just one small thing I'm waiting for. Because once that begins, if we have a large eruption, that will save us some problems down the road. So but because we haven't had any, uh, you're looking at a potential of not only eruptions, but some other things that come with it. So you're you're uh, anticipating that really, there's a lot of things being affected here, but you're saying that the heating of the core of the earth and the heating of the core of the other planets is really the biggest deal going now because everything else is going to, is going to manifest from that. Yeah, because if, if, if the core of the planet heats, when, when it starts to heat, of course, it's going uh, to cause more and more molten rock. Uh, the volume of molten rock to be in there now, because it, 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 when you turn rock into a liquid, it condenses. The problem is we have liquid down there also. We have oceans down there, right? They're discovering all the time. As soon as that ocean, that superheated water is introduced into the magma, you have a pressure problem, and, and it's going to find its way out. But we have... We have a very delicate infrastructure, right? Very delicate infrastructure. Now, this this is uh, is just not a good scenario because you're looking at a buildup that is going to continue to happen. So the potential becomes greater every day. We do not have some type of major volcanic eruption. We need a major volcanic eruption. Wow! To cut off some of the pressure. What? So you're saying we really need this to happen? We need a massive explosion from one of these volcanoes to really release some of this pressure. On will benefit all of mankind. Yeah, we do. Because if not, it, it's going to be too many at one time. And of course, that comes with massive earthquakes, too. Because if too many at one time are going to shake, it's going to cause a displacement. With that displacement comes liquefaction. With liquefaction comes continental drift and movement and all sorts of things. And we don't need that. So if we had one massive eruption, well, then we would be, or, or a couple massive eruptions, it would relieve some of that pressure inside the earth. Now, I know, it, we... sounds, I know it sounds odd and strange and everything else. And I know that a lot of people would think Yellowstone. Yellowstone is an isolated caldera. Yellowstone would not do it. it okay. Yellowstone is just not going to do it. We need one of those big underwater volcanoes to go off. And I'm afraid, it, which is why I continually pray for Italy, because Italy is linked uh, to a couple of channels in Italy are, are connected uh, only by thin rock directly going deep into the earth. And if it continues to build pressure, it's going to feed up through Italy. And so you're looking at something near Italy, and also uh, in Indonesia, you're looking at that area still not being enough uh, to evacuate some of the more, uh, so, some of the more, some of the more uh, greater pressures in the earth to relieve it. So, uh, you, so you, if, if you had to, be bad either way, you know, it would be bad either way. But we really need some type of eruption to regulate this uh, all of what the earth has taken in. So you, so I guess if you had to predict, and I'm not going to ask you to do that, but if if you if you take a look at the Earth right now, the two, two most vulnerable areas of a massive massive eruption would be uh, Italy and uh, the islands there in Indonesia. Yeah, and one more spot, one more spot. And I know it sounds strange, but I had mentioned this a long time ago, and it's New York City. What? Um, wait a minute. I mean, I'm, I'm, are we talking off the coast of New York there in the Atlantic? No, no. No, underneath. Right underneath. Underneath New York, New York City. Yeah, I'm below New York. See, we have fault lines that form uh, on a monthly basis, right? We also have new there, there are lava channels due to that pressure being formed also. Now, that's trackable by, because when lava moves, it, cause, it, it causes a uh, magnetic um, uh, it, it causes a magnetic uh, pulse to pop out of it, right? Because it's producing current as it moves. It's so hot, it produces current. You can track that current. You can see that current. And underneath New York City, that current is increasing, although minimal right now, but it's increasing. At some point, that's going to breach, right? It's going to hit the coal reserves and breach. If that coal catches by way of magma, no one's putting that out. 
and then those smoldering fires in Pennsylvania underneath the ground that are coal fires being fed by something they don't know what. They've been like that for 10 years, 10, 15 years. They've been burning under the ground. They've been sucking houses down into them, and they won't, you know, they really don't put that on the news. But um, people right now are having to move out of neighborhoods all across the U.S. because of things burning underneath the ground. But New York is one of those places which one day, a long time ago, I talked about the infrastructure of New York and the gas lines and everything else. And I said, if magma were to ever breach uh, or get into that area where the gas lines are, they're so fragile right now, New York is in trouble. So you, you have these problems. Um, they, they, they just simply can't. Those problems can't be solved. You know, Mike. It's a matter of time. Mike, I, of time. I guess I have to read a couple verses here. Revelation 18 says, and after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you may not par be partakers of her sins, and that you receive not her plagues. Now, I won't read the whole chapter, but if you go on down, it tells you that there was a great event. Here's what it says happens in verse 15. The merchants of things which are made rich by her shall stand afar off for fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and in purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, for in one hour so great riches is come to naught, and every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, what city is like unto this great city? Um, I'm not saying, again, it doesn't tell you specifically in the Bible what that city is, but certainly, I guess, if the event you say could happen in New York City was to happen, it would actually create this very scenario we're reading in Revelation 18. Not saying it is, but something's, yeah, but, but something's going to happen somewhere. Isn't that right, Mike? Yeah, it is brewing. It's, it's most definitely brewing. And you know what? That, that's an interesting scripture, too, because um, that woman that sits atop the beast, the beast hates that woman. I'm yeah. just pointing that out. The beast hates her. Right. Hatred to pieces. Hatred. So a, lot of, a lot of people, a lot of people, I mean, I've studied this many, many times, and there's a lot of different potentials. I mean, Rome has always been considered that city, as well as a lot, a lot of folks think it's New York. But I, I certainly think I would lean toward Rome, uh, maybe because of just the Roman Empire and, and, and all the things that we've seen come out of Rome over the historically, if we take a look at the. But you know, again, that's up to God, what God's going to do. Yeah. One thing's for sure. What you've done is you've identified that Italy, that uh, I, uh, Indonesia, and that even under New York City is the potential for an explosion, an eruption of a magnitude on a biblical scale that, could, that actually could create this very event. Yeah, and it's, uh, you know what, too, but yeah, speaking of Italy, too, um, they recently had issues with in Italy of um, some of their roads were actually melting. Uh, what? They also had they also had small small venting, small uh, steam vents coming up from places where it shouldn't come up from, and, and again melting asphalt. So something is alive in Italy underneath the earth, and that's a very um, uh, it's just a very unstable thing there. They, they also had a set of earthquakes that were just, I mean, they were just linked to uh, a very large potential volcano there. And it's a very, it's a monster in Italy that has long been forgotten about, but through satellites, once you begin to watch the uh, formations and everything else, and they actually did have people go down there and investigate, they, they were looking into it, but it's something they're not really going to publicize. Um, no. Not yet, anyway. But but they're going to have no choice. The, the, the deal is, these things 
My outlook is that that is absolutely going to happen with Italy. Italy is going to have a problem. That's just my viewpoint. New York is also going to have a problem. That's my viewpoint. I know everybody's looking uh, for um, Yellowstone to pop and blow, but we have bigger monsters in the world. Yellowstone is a baby compared to quite a few of them in, in, uh, in the world. And in the Atlantic Ocean, there's a severe problem. In the Atlantic, the Earth is actually cracked and nickel still comes up from the depths of the Earth. Nickel is coming up in the Atlantic. That's an issue. That's a problem. And that crack grows every single year. That, that's a real bad issue. So with all these things happening and the radiation coming in, we're, we're going to see changes. You know, one of the issues is going to, one of the problems is going to be passed by, while everybody's fixated on these dangers, they haven't really mentally put themselves inside of a world where these things have happened. Right. No. And so the one caution I would give everybody ever talking about these things is try not to let those outside of, of the church allow the argument to be on when these things are going to happen. We know these things are going to happen. And they're, they're trying to make an argument as to the technical aspects of them. But the Lord's people need to put themselves in a middle mindset saying, okay, Lord, your word is true. These things are going to happen. Yep. Where am I now? You yep. know, what am I missing now? I need to be able to stand in all of these uh, types of environments. And it takes a real trust of Christ to do this. For, for example, the arsenic that will be trapped coming into in the air and everywhere else. The right? water, the, the water. The symptoms from arsenic are a metallic tasting around, excessive saliva, issues swallowing, hair loss, con uh, some convulsions, skin changes, new spots on your skin, abdominal pain from time to time, becoming hot all of a sudden and then followed by being cold all of a sudden. The, the, that's in men. Uh, you're going to have uh, muscle cramps, chest pains, where nothing is wrong. Your fingers start going numb, right? You're going to have, uh, people are going to have bad bone problems, more than problem. usual. Uh, I said it better constant myself. sore throats among Anyways, children is uh, also found in the presence of arsenic. Uh, and there are mental the symptoms. In the beginning there, there was there a lot of uh, symptoms and there stuff coming up. You might want to watch it a second time. Turn the sound out, put your music on, and put it on slow motion or medium speed. Not miss a thing. But that planet's real. Things are being affected. Got Jesus, because he's on his way. We're preparing. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Come on, people. I want to meet a bunch of you up to supper table. A marriage lamb supper. Coming in a neighborhood near you to pick you up. Yep, rapture's coming, believe it or not. So, love you guys. Hope that wasn't too much for the eyeballs. But, uh, you know, I've got to have truth. And that's got to be truth. That's a lot of truth for one day. Talk to you later. God bless.